Hey, what's going on? So what I'm going to show you here is uh, the Flightstream 210 interfaced uh, with the Garmin 430W. This also works with the 530. A lot of people ask, uh, what's the big deal with this whole flight plan transfer? So just give you a little demonstration of a couple uh, cool little things. So real quickly, uh, I've already got my iPad in the plane, got the 430W on. We're in the hangar. There's no, there's no GPS position. That doesn't matter. Um, notice that the uh, iPad is connected via uh, Garmin Connect um, and that's via Bluetooth. So we're linked up. What we're going to simulate here is that we've typed in a, we've got our clearance, we're on the ground in Johnstown, Pennsylvania headed to Tappahannock, Virginia. And uh, Johnstown uh, gives us the clearance of uh, Johnstown, uh, direct to the Johnstown Victor 469 Elkin, Victor 286 Tappa, then to Tappahannock itself. Well, that becomes a problem for uh, those of us that have 430s and 530s because we know now that we're going to have a big exercise in spinning the knob to take care of all those uh, waypoints along the uh, Victor Airway. There's the route on the GPS uh, or on the uh, iPad. There's just a couple extra fixes here, but um, doing this now with the Flightstream 210 is really just a piece of cake. If you see um, up here on the ForeFlight app, we have an extra button that appears. Um, try and do this without making the camera too shaky. This button right here uh, appears to, and that handles the transferring of flights to and from the panel. So all I have to do is push that button, and you can see that for flight pops up with a message that says, what do you want to do? Do you want to load from the panel, or do you want to send to the panel? So I'm going to send to the panel, okay, and then as soon as I do that, I get a message enunciator flashing on the 430. It's instantly. Now I can read that message. You don't have to go to the message, but if I hit the message, and I've already got a lot of uh, error messages in here because I'm in the hangar, but you can see that the first message here says um, there's a connect flight plan pending. Check the flight plan import page. So all I have to do really is just press the flight plan key right here on the 430. And I have a flight plan here, pending flight plan, Johnstown to Tappahannock. All I have to do is activate the cursor, highlight it, push the enter button. Sorry, I'm trying to keep the... Okay, and then it gives me my flight plan. Now, this is coming off of four flight, and it has... I'm going to active, go ahead and activate the, way, the flight plan here. Just activate. And now, when I scroll through, and I'm near Tappahannock, so it automatically wants me to go there. But if I can scroll all the way up through it, you can see Johnstown, Johnstown, Nesto. And then all of the turn points along the airway are in there. The airway itself is not in there, but all the points that I didn't have to spin are already there. Boom. Easy. So, hey, no sweat. Airways, no problem. Okay, there's the plan. Now, let's say that, uh, and I'm gonna, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this flight plan out. So we have nothing left on the 430. No messages. Now, I'm going to come down here and let's say that on our way to Tappahannock, we want to take a detour. After the Tap intersection, we want to just go uh, see our buddy's house. And he lives, we're just going to rubber band it. He lives right here. That's just a random point. Now I'm going to select the uh, just the Latin long of that point, saying that I knew where that was. Okay, boom. Okay, so now I've got a random Latin long that's stuck into my flight plan. Okay, you can see it right there. And let's say that I wanted to just take a couple other lat longs on my way back to Tappahannock. So I'm just going to go on here. I'm going to select lat long. And I want one in the middle here just to make it interesting. Okay. And so now I've got a flight plan up here that's the same exact flight plan. But now I've got three lats and longs. Uh, just manual waypoints that I put in there maybe interesting points over the ground or whatever. Now this is a big problem, right, on the 430 and 530. How in the world are we going to spin all those Latin longs? Well, never fear. Flightstream 210 is on the job. I'm just going to push the, bu the transfer button. And I'm going to send that to the panel. Okay. Now, I have the message flashing, but I don't actually have to go to the message. Okay. I can just go straight to the flight plan page right here. And then it shows the new flight plan. Now it's still from Johnstown to, Hap to Tappahannock. So I'll highlight that, press the enter key, 
and then I'll activate it. Now, if you notice, look on the flight plan. After TAPA, it puts in, it automatically built three user waypoints, CXO345, and it just numbers them in sequence. You could have as many, I don't know, however many the 430 holds. But notice that it's automatically jammed everything into the box for me. Let me see if I can, now if you look at my map page, you can see TAPA, let's see if I can scroll over a little bit. So you see the TAP intersection, and then it matches exactly what's on the iPad down there. That's pretty easy, right? Pretty cool little function. So, now I'm just going to go in there, and let's say, now, the easiest thing to do for procedures, so let's say we're arriving in a Tappahannock, and what we're going to do is we're going to shoot an instrument approach into Tappahannock now. And uh, I think, my opinion is, it's easier to load approaches and procedures from the 430. Now, here's the cool thing about this. If I just press the procedure key, okay, and it's going to ask me, I'm going to select an approach into Tappahannock. I'm going to do the RDAV 28, and I'm going to go via dirge. Okay, now, if I load that into my flight plan, I'll just hit load. Now you can see, and of course the, uh, the uh, 430 always does this, tap a hannock and then the approach afterwards, but I immediately get a message on the iPad that says load the route from the panel and it shows me the route. All I have to do here now is click on load route, okay, and now since tap a hannock is actually in there twice, I'll move this out just to make more sense. But after I do my little zigzag routes, then it takes me up to dirge, desac, got me, and sets me up for the RNAV runway 28 in the Tappahannock. So that's a pretty easy thing to do. And uh, it automatically synchronizes. Now when I push this up here, you can see there's an option that says auto receive from panel. And when that option's selected, that's when the iPad will get a message, okay? So right now the iPad is automatically synced. Um, with the 430W. So if I come in here and just say delete the flight plan, yes. Okay, now let's just say I want to make another flight plan in here. Um, here comes on my spinning. Let's say McConnell Air Force Base to wherever. This sounds good. Okay, boom, I just hit that. Look, it automatically got a, okay, I activated it here. On the 430, I automatically got a pop-up message that says, do you want to load the route from the panel? I'll just click on load route. Boom. And I'll recenter the route. And I automatically have it synchronized with my 430. So the iPad comes in really handy when you're designing the route, making all the waypoints, um, taking a clearance. But then everything that's easy to do and that you're used to doing with the 430 in flight, um, is very very simple still on the 430 and it will automatically synchronize now i don't let's see if i can just uh select here and come into in a procedure and i'll just show you one more time here so let's say we want the rnav to run my six whatever and we want joe that i don't know where these places are but i'm just going to load it okay once again message pops up and i load route now if i come in here then you can see that the 430 now has the ILS approach dialed in. So it's automatically synchronized with the approach, or I'm sorry, the RNAV approach that I selected, RNAV to 6, it's automatically synchronized it up. So hopefully that uh, shows some of the benefits of the uh, of the panel and um, of the uh, Flightstream 210 and how it can bring new life into your Garmin 430. Now don't be trying this with your GTX 345 transponder, everybody, because unfortunately Garmin left this feature out, and uh, yeah, you got to spend an extra thousand bucks to buy Flightstream 210 after you've already spent the money on the uh, 345. So the GDL8, if you don't need to go over 18,000 feet and you already have a GPS source, the GDL88 and Flightstream 210 is actually a more capable combination than the 345. You can see that. This plane, we actually have the KT-76A transponder still going. If that thing goes out, I'll get one for 100 bucks on eBay. They're worth nothing now. There's an endless supply of spare transponders now. So, All right, hope that helped. If you got any questions, send me a message.